Hey guys, if you are a developer and you want to achieve infra's code approach for all the services that are currently working on, then there can be a lot of learning curve required in generic like learning Terraform or Cloud Formation and so on. What if I tell you there is a service from AWS itself where you can follow the infra's code approach without learning new tooling with just the language which are comfort like using JavaScript or Python, TypeScript and so on. Today we are going to see CDK and we'll explore how we can uh, create a stack and what are the documents to be referred and where can we find the example source for such tooling. Currently I have installed the CDK tooling in my machine. Uh, you can get it installed using Brew or I will also uh, share the reference uh, documents how to get this installed. You would need the CLA credentials. So I'm just copying my uh, the CLA one and getting it exported within my machine. And for this exercise, let me create a directory for this one. Let's say CDK demo and let me navigate to that directory. So now we want to declare this directory as a CDK app or CDK resource we are going to create. To do that, you can use the command CDK init. Here it supports two parameters. Either you can use uh, sample iPhone app or app. The difference between the sample iPhone app and app is the sample iPhone app will give you the uh, related sample resources. Let me uh, show you directly. Let's say I'm using a sample iPhone app and then I would need to pass a parameter called iPhone iPhone language and then uh, Python in it. So it's going to uh, create all the tasks for me and it's created multiple folders. And if you see, uh, within the folder it's creating a sample resource like i am sqs sns and so on let me also show you how it would look if we are using the another way route which is the one so let me create another folder called let's say cdk app let me try to init using the normal one but the same parameter so the only difference between a sample if an app and app yeah, so if you see here, there is no sample resources created. If you want to start from scratch, you can use CDK for an app or the one, the parameter direct app. Or if you're in a learning curve or you want to first time demoing it, then I would highly recommend using a sample life an app so that you know like how it is linked, how the class is being called and so on. For this purpose, we'll go with the sample life one so that we know like the flow and how to create a resource and we'll be creating a sample S3 bucket with this demo part. Okay, so let me go to the folder, which is the sample one. So for to avoid the conclusion, let me delete it. Once you have moved in, we are using a Python for this one. Obviously, you can use JavaScript in your own exercise. And there is an AWS tutorial already available in the website. I will also share the link for that. Now, if you see, there is a dot .vnv is there, which is like a virtual environment, and we want to swap into that one. So to do that, I would use source and dot vnv within the bit activated so that will activate our virtual environment. So now we want to install our requirements.txt. So the requirement.txt is already provided by the CDK itself. So you can use pip install iPhone R and then the file name requirements.txt. So this will get you a, the requirements get installed within your machine and so AWS doesn't just supports for you the Python it also supports you C sharp, JavaScript, TypeScript and even Java itself. Now let's quickly talk about each files so the app.py it's where actually your application entry point and where your top level app is going to get constructed and then we also have the test if you want to write any test cases and the requirement.txt we have seen which contains what packages would be required for it and also the, the cdk underscore demo this file is I would be defining the sources like what resources you are going to get created in our example we are trying to create an s3 bucket but before that let's try to see what are the commands you would go in the journey of creating a resource itself the first thing you would need to do is you would need to bootstrap command cdk uh, bootstrap this command is done it will be creating an the equivalent cloud formation you see uh, it's creating a cloud formation chain set so whatever the python code is there it's creating a the cloud formation chain set because at the back end by default it's going to use the cloud formation so all the output uh, we get is as if you are running cloud formation the main advantage here is uh, as a developer you don't need to worry about okay what uh, syntax you need to use 
So even if you are going with Terraform, Cloud Formation, then there's a lot of other syntax there. Those are eliminated with this approach of the CDK. So it's going to take a couple of minutes. In the meantime, like I will show you like how you can know like what is being created or how to be done. So do that. You can use uh, CDK docs, which will directly open you the browser page with the document link. And you can go to the API reference. This page is going to contain all the details or all the syntax that you would need to pass by creating the code. So now, as I said, it supports multiple languages like Python, Java, JavaScript, and so on. Now, how can you swap the languages? So you can go to constructs and you would see something like overview. And if you change, if you go here, like you see like what module you are going to look at. And let's say in our use case, we're going to go with Python. So I move to Python. If you want to go with JavaScript, you can change the JavaScript and so on. And all the resources are over here. So let's say if I want to create a resource called S3, then I go for AWS Canvas S3. So in my code, I would need to import this one dot S3 and what API call I'm going to use. So for example, I want to create an S3 bucket, then I go for bucket and here you get the sample resource, like how should I create the bucket and for each parameters, the explanation is being neatly documented and also it's clearly mentioned whether it's an optional parameter or a mandatory parameter. So accordingly, you can read and then pass those uh, parameters uh, in your code. Let's try to follow the same syntax and I'm going to use to create a S3 bucket. So to do that, we have seen it's using AWS underscore S3 and let's call it as S3 over here. And so down, you would need to set a variable. That's what they are doing over here from the guide. I have just copied whatever is there and I have made an equivalent one in the line over here. So they say as per documentation, the bucket underscore name, it should be passed. If you want to create a bucket in a preferred name, else the cloud formation or the backend is going to assign its own value. So in order to know, like we are creating our own thing, I have used the same bucket name uh, parameter. And now let's try to do the commands cdk i can like deploy so that we know whether this bucket is able to create it or not so it's doing the synthesis time and then if you want to just do the synthesis then you can do cdk synth but since we do cdk deploy it's automatically doing the synthesis and it's starting the deploying part so next is creating a chain set let's see what else it comes with as you see, the bucket is going to create and then the cloud formation stop stack is going to create and the ID they mapped is, which is the demo which we passed here. So once the S3 is created, we should be able to see it in our browser, whether the resource is being created or not. So ideally, as per the update, the bucket would have created. Yeah, so entire everything is created. So if we now navigate into the UI of S3, we should be able to see the bucket name S3. So that's how we can create a resource using Python or Java or JavaScript, whatever the language which you would be preferred in. And, and, and backend they're using the infrastructure code approach. So if you're a developer, I highly recommend consider visiting this service. Uh, if you don't have time to upskill on other tooling like Terraform or CloudFormation to achieve your infrastructure code goal. And to destroy the stack, whatever we created, uh, you can use uh, CDK uh, destroy. So that's going to destroy all the resources that are created as part of your code. And you can also use CDK diff to know if, if you change something or if you're doing updating, then you can see like uh, what's being changed from previous state to the next state. So now we could see the stack is being destroyed. One thing what we observed is when I do a CDK destroy, it's destroying the stack, but not actually the resources which are created as part of this is having destroyed. So for instance, uh, the bucket which we created it remains exist over there. For some reason, it's not getting destroyed. If someone watching this video, if you're expert at CDK, if you know why this is happening or how to handle it, do comment in the section. I'll also try to cross check with any other expertise who are currently working with CDK. If you want to explore more on this topic, AWS provides you an example Git repository with a lot of examples of each and every resource. How can you achieve it? And the same way the documentation can come handy for you, CDK you want to use and what are the syntax you will follow. So all those things being provided over here. Check out the playlist where you have made other hands-on based projects in AWS. See you over there.